Hi, welcome back WeldTube family. My name is David Teresa, and today we're going to be showing you how to weld this 4130 chromoly tubing. You know, you find this stuff all throughout motorsports. You know, it's aftermarket suspension systems, roll cages, race cars. Let's get to it. Check out weldlife.com and shop all welding gear shown in this video. All right, guys, so if you guys see, we have our, you know, inch and a half chromoly, 4130 chromoly tubing. We've got it all notched up. You now we cleaned our mill scale off pretty tight fit ups and we're going to be using 332nd ADS D2 wire and on my TIG rig here I'm going to be running a 332 tungsten number 8 cup now using a foot pedal high frequency start and the technique that I'm going to be using today I'm just going to basically be dabbing a little bit coming up you know you don't want to weave you don't want to kind of sit in one spot too long you don't want to overheat the material that can kind of weaken it so now you just want to leave a nice little bead, nice little profile, just kind of dabbing, one pass. So a lot of you might be thinking, why would you be using chromoly tubing on stuff like this? You know, typically it's used because it's a lot stronger, a lot safer for a roll cage. And you know, in motorsports, you know, the driver's safety is very, very important. You know, even the hobbyists, you know, driving their hot rod around on the weekend that has, you know, a, a chromoly roll cage just you know, just in case something happens. You know, these welds are really important. It's really critical that you take your time, you do the job right, correctly, cleanly. And apart from that, you know, this stuff is not cheap. You wanna make sure that, you know, you leave a quality piece and, you know, hopefully you don't have to test it, but it'll be there when you need it. All right, so gonna go ahead and get started here. You know, I'm gonna try to quarter different sections of weld just to kind of spread the heat out. So slowly stepping on our pedal, getting our arc initiated. And like I said, I'm manually pulsing this with my foot as I'm seeing the puddle. You now just adding enough filler metal just to get a nice profile. You don't want to stack too much material or leave kind of a worm looking bead. You want the profile to be kind of very low, very smooth, very flat. That'll help with the strength of the weld. And very important, every time you stop, clip the end of that wire in case you did get it contaminated. You know, you don't want to restart and start getting trash in that weld. You know, that could be really hard, especially like on these tight areas where you can't really clean it up. You can't get a grinder in there. You know, you start contaminating it. You're just going to make things a whole lot worse for yourself. So I'm actually gonna pull the tungsten out quite a bit. I've got maybe about a 5 8 inch stick out. And that's gonna allow me to get into this tight throat of this cut piece here. It's a nice thing when you're running a foot pedal, you know, if you're not on the foot pedal and you touch the piece by accident or you're, you know, you're moving around, it's not gonna arc off on you. In these tight areas, you gotta be real patient. You know, establish a good puddle nice and cleanly be patient you know don't try to jam too much filler rod at once you know and and for the guys you know just learning this at home you know cut you a few little practice coupons practice running practice your heat practice your foot movements and because i i am prefabbing on this table you know i don't want to continue to weld all in this one area all at once i'm going to go ahead and kind of turn this piece over weld on the opposite side Spread the heat out, you know, you don't want to overheat and just concentrate it all at once on that one weld, especially when you got a bunch of welds like this. Spread the heat out, it'll help your piece out. And you know, like a piece like this, it's typically found like an aftermarket suspension component, an aftermarket frame component, or sometimes, you know, something small like this, a cutout piece. It can be when a race car has an accident, you know, they need to do a repair splice into it. It's also nice to have this uh, flexible gun here. You know, I can kind of bend the angle that I need to put my hand comfortably and adjust myself. You know, be careful, the piece is hot. You know, and of course, properly heat up that tack. Don't start prematurely. Wait for your puddle to form. Let's see, I'm gonna throttle down, readjust myself a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so, you know, some places where you don't need to have all that tungsten stick out, go ahead and bring it back in. You know, it just helps keep a little more control. I'm gonna go ahead and use these pliers here, kind of like an armrest. Put it up right here. That'll help keep my wrist and my arms off the, the hot surfaces. Again, warm up the tacks. Now let's take some practice getting around all this, these tight turns and these weird angles. But as long as you don't run too hot, gives you enough time to kind of readjust yourself. And of course, you got that foot pedal. Use it to your advantage. Welding with TIG, you know, you're, you're going for precision here. You're not going for speed. You know, typically your fit-ups, if you have a good tubing notcher, you know, they're usually going to be pretty good, pretty close. As you know, nothing's perfect. Sometimes you will have a small gap. You just got to add a little bit more filler wire. Lower your amperage a little bit with your foot. Just don't overheat it. You know, and I, I am running the pulse flow a little bit long. And I am doing that so, you know, when I'm in tight places like this, and kind of make sure that the argon does reach it. It does kind of purge it out before our arc starts. You know, and if your machine doesn't have, you know, adjustable pre-flow or post-flow or something like that. You know, if you, you just got a regular TIG rig with a, you know, the regular valve. Just make sure you open it up a little bit before. You always want to run uphill with TIG. You know, sometimes you may have to run downhill. Especially like when you're putting, installing these pieces in the, in the cars, on the motorcycles, the suspension components. You may have to run downhill. And, you know, that's perfectly fine. Again, as long as you're not, you know, just piling metal on, creating too much heat. Just, you know, follow the same theories. It's nice and easy, nice and clean weld. And you'll have a nice and strong structure. All right. You can see, you know, I, I built this, uh, this piece of a uh, roll cage here. You know, this is typically something you kind of find like, you know, around your feet, you know, this would be kind of running flat across the bottom. This is the part that's going to tie into the hoop of your roll cage. You can see usually it's, it's heavily gusseted. You know, you need a lot of strength in that area. All right, so there you have it. Showed you guys how to weld up this roll cage using TIG. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like any of the cool gear you saw us using here, don't forget to visit weldlife.com. See you guys on the next one.